Welcome back. You're watching Cross Shots with Nathan Shan. We're talking about carding and the potential impact of that carding, and then also talking about uh, possible solutions as well. So let's talk a bit about uh, possible solutions, uh, if if and what could be done uh, to change this. So let's start with uh, frontline workers. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you're a frontline uh, worker, and you know there are many many frontline workers caught in the middle, uh, wanting to help the young people, but they're also part of some sort of a system that regulates them, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what can frontline workers do effectively? Because it's a challenging uh, question for many people. It, it is challenging um, to be working for an institution. Um, so I've chosen to actually do a lot of this type of work in response as a resident. Um, I'm a resident in, in the Jane and Finch community. Mm -hmm. I have a 19-year-old son and a 3-year-old son. Um, so I keep it I keep it as real. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, my experience is, is a lived experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I'm part of a, a grassroots um, movement mm -hmm. called Jane and Finch Action Against Poverty. Um, and, and we do all sorts of different types of work. Um, but I think one of our key, um, our key way of mobilizing is connecting with other groups and movements that are doing similar work across the city. Um, and, and understanding that what we're experiencing, Jane and Finch, isn't isolated. This is something that's happening city, national, and across the world. Um, so I think um, the work we're doing on a grassroots level with residents, um, uh, young people, parents, and other um, movements is, is how we're responding to this work. And it keeps my employment safe. Um, because this work is serious. I mean, we're, we're talking directly to people that can, can destroy our lives. Um, when this work did exist in my employment, the police have no, no lines that they don't cross. Mm -hmm. I, I was pregnant with my second child and they came and hijacked a meeting that, that I was co-chair at, at, at a table um, and, and said that the work I'm doing is borderline criminal. Um, so, you know, that was one of the more obvious times where I was just like, okay, you know, lines are getting blurred and I need to figure out how to keep me and my family safe. And I guess people might think stop doing the work, but the work can't stop. The, the brutal force is, is real. Um, income security is real. Um, crime is a product of poverty. And as long as people are, are living in poverty um, this is this is this is what um, I think we should be doing um, so though the crimes that happen at the elite levels often don't get highlighted as much I exactly as, as, as people who are in low-income situations being into that situation. so let's talk a bit about um, the practice of carding itself um, is it something that could be regulated? Because there's been a number of conversation about reforming it, regulating it, or finding a way to kind of make it less uh, problematic and so on, right? And everybody has been dancing around this. Uh, few have called for a complete ban, but there's a number of people who are been back and forth, including the mayor. Uh, had you know first wasn't uh, supportive of the ending, and then announced that he would support an end to the practice, and then now you know, not too sure where he is, right? So what are you noticing around this? And what, what's your perspective on how to end this, uh, uh, this controversy? Well, at all set, I should say this. Any one organization or organization or individual that supports carding is an enemy of the people because you're stopping people in non-criminal encounters and getting their information, harassing them. So carding must end. No regulation. All we want is the police to just leave us alone. Let, let us be, because we're not committing a crime. So just let us be. We don't want to talk to you. So that's the stance that I am taking on carding. Mm -hmm. No reform, it must go. Mayor Tory on June the 7th actually didn't call for the end of carding. He said, I cancel what we've got. Mm -hmm. But in his very statement, he was advocated for carding because he still you're saying that we should significantly reduce random stopping mm -hmm. and also the database needs to be better managed. You're only going to have that if you're collecting information from people. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was going to restore the April 24th, 9, 2014 policy, which is what he did 11 days later. Mm -hmm. So we have to organize 
communities at a neighborhood level build organizations and support the people in refusing to share the information with the police because you know we have to teach people that and provide the support for them not to give their personal information to the police. Mm -hmm. If they're charged with a crime, don't talk to the police. And look, unless you're just giving me your name and your mm -hmm. address, but don't give the information to the cops because they're not our friends. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you that whatever information that you use when you're under arrest, that mm -hmm. it can be maybe used against in a court of law. But how pract practical is this? Just as a, as a question of practicality, you know, challenging a system takes a lot of time a lot of money, you know, even human rights complaints take a long period of time with lots of lots of uh, funds necessary, even though, you know, the system is supposed to provide it for free. Um, so, um, you know, practically, would that work uh, unless there's a support network that's built by the community? Yes, there are a number of things that we, we have to do. But first of all, in all systems of oppression, when you resist oppression, some of us are going to become martyrs and some of us will spend time in prison and become political prisoners, and some of us will be brutally attacked that it can affect our mental health and also so long-term physical health. It's the nature of struggle. When you resist, the oppressor will do bad things to you. This is not gonna be a casualty-free resistance to police violence. But if we organize, um, and some, some elements of it's already going on, like having um, cop watch um, apps where people can record um, the police. We also need to develop like a roster of lawyers that can support people that when they refuse to give the information that they're detained or arrest on trumped up charges, they know they can call a lawyer and the person will be there um, as soon as possible to take care and to defend them. Um, we need to set up cop watch programs in our communities so that when you're you know, police enter our communities, we must have them under surveillance until they leave our community. And if they're harassing people, we pull people out into the street to ensure that, you know, protect people's rights. So it calls for a high level of organizing to resist police violence and also suing them in divisional court, in, in the human rights tribunal. So it's like you need um, a number of tactics as part of an overall strategy. Now, Jane and Finch is a, is a neighborhood that's often stigmatized from externally. You know, if you, you know, I, I was at a community meeting where they had asked people who are outside the community to describe Jane and Finch in words, and the words were brutal. When community itself has very empowering words and the resilience and those things are recognized, right? Mm -hmm. So, in terms of uh, this attitude of of all policing and so on, how does that uh, result in a community image? We talked about individual impact. But what impact does it have on a, on a neighborhood? And how does that impact uh, everybody's life in there? That's a, that's a that's heavy a question. question. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You know, I think there's so many different attitudes because of, like, this isn't just something that just happened this past year, right? And, and the richness of Jane and Finch is when people move in, they don't leave. Mm -hmm. So the identity of Jane and Finch is something that I think people have been carrying for decades. Mm -hmm. Um, I ask this question because it's very similar to other neighborhoods, whether it's Regent Park, St. Jamestown, or Malvern, and mm -hmm. a few of the neighborhoods that, you know, have gone through this process of stigmatization, which is often external yeah. and po forced upon, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of these tactics are around divide and conquer, right? Um, if you talk to an elder about young people, you know, an elder will say, you know, they need to put pick up their pants and put on their belt, right? Or they wouldn't be harassed by the cops. Yeah. But if you talk to that elder a little bit more, right? And ask them, you know, should a young person get beaten up or carded and wants to know, you know, where you live and their address because their pants is below their waistline. Then there's another conversation, right? Um, I, th I think we have these conversations in silos. So elders will be talking about community safety and that looks very different than a young person and, and how they look at community safety or a mom of two boys and how that, what that looks like for community safety. Um, so, and their tactics are so, so genius, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, they come in during the day and they'll plant um, flowers and do beautification projects and and bike tours and um, 
you know, at six o'clock at night, they're closing down barbecues and circling young people for cops on a bike and taunting them and, and you know, saying horrible things about their family or how much they're gonna amount to anything and triggering them, right? Like this is the night and the day of this reality. Um, so I, th I, th I think the question is so complicated because the reality is so, so complicated. complicated. Um, but Jane and Finch I is resisting. Um, I think conversations are happening outside of the silos. Um, and I think people are, are connecting bigger systemic pieces mm -hmm. to policing and crime mm -hmm. and poverty and housing and kids getting pushed out of schools and playground playgrounds falling apart and really seeing this holistically mm -hmm. and and demystifying some of the internal self-hate mm -hmm. um, because poverty we end up looking at ourselves and and our incompetencies and our what we aren't able to do so a lot of and a lot of self-blame and I, I think people are, are connecting to a, a, to a bigger picture mm -hmm. so we're coming towards the end of the end of the show let's talk a bit about uh, political action in terms of uh, elected representatives um, what? <laughs> that's a good answer. <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, currently that's one of the methods to get some, some things done, right? So provincially, we just had a MPP earlier speak about bringing potentially a motion or directive or a, or a private member bill to end carding, right? What else could be done at a legislative le level if there is any, any possibility of, uh, of political structures changing? The only reason why the NDP is pushing this it's because of the years of work and organizing from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the work that we do from below that push them to do anything. The, recently, when the political notables came mm -hmm. out and condemned carding in Toronto, yeah. former justices and others, it's only because of the work done by community organizations. So that's where we need to put our effort mm -hmm. and not look to politicians. We must develop our capacity mm -hmm. to resist, not just only police violence, but the state not investing in social housing, the, you know, we need to look at issues around income security, like a range of issues. So our, yeah, the grassroots level, that's where our attention should be at, building our capacity to resist oppression, whether it's at the level of class, gender, race, that's it. And that builds the political pressure necessary to get action, right? mm -hmm. rather than to be submissively asking uh, political structures. You know. Yeah. Yes. So, what what's your uh, take on that? I'm sure it's very similar. But oh, like um, about like you know again political structures either any level. I, I totally agree. It, it's going to have to come from the bottom to the top. Um, our three local councillors um, have been in power for many terms, and um, none of the three had any kind of stance against carding or even shared their concern that their constituency is dealing with this lived reality. Um, our MP um, has been MIA as well. Uh, most recently we had a, uh, an event a couple of Saturdays ago inviting all of our elective uh, officials to come to talk to the residents about um, dreaming of 2020 and what our community would look like. And um, it's just time and time again, uh, they've not just failed, but they don't show up. Um, and, and that's not where our, our, our strength, our power, our energy should be put into. Yeah, I mean, amount of time political uh, representatives spend in festivals and, and fun stuff, and then mm -hmm. when you have serious yeah. need, uh, often MIA. So um, thank you very much uh, for both of you who have uh, kind of worked a lot on the ground, as well as working towards advocating for a more equal society, particularly ending uh, police uh, violence and particularly ending police-based discrimination mm -hmm. as well. Thank you very much for your work. Thanks for joining us as well, uh, Butterfly and Ajamu, uh, for taking the time and joining us today. Uh, we will definitely explore this uh, as, uh, as this issue gets taken up in a few other shows later as well. Thank well you. Thanks for the opportunity for us to present our views. and present our views to your audience. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You Thank you. So viewers here, you watched uh, a show on carding, uh, police-based uh, discrimination and uh, issues related to carding and how it's impacting certain communities and more so how it could be uh, resolved or, or how it could be addressed. 
Thank you for watching Cross Shorts with Nathan Shani. You please send your comments and feedback to crossshorts at tamilvision.tv. I will see you next week with another topic. Thank you.